Commission of India that will have to put all the funders' names within three weeks before the public. Opposition hails the Supreme Court verdict on electoral bond scheme, says the BJP's biggest scam will now be exposed. The BJP scheme says scheme was introduced to ensure transparency in funding. There is no scam. Ahead of a proposed Bharat Band by farmer groups, round three of the government farmer talks to begin shortly in Chandigarh. Punjab Chief Minister Mahan also to join in the meeting with farm leaders with the deadlock end. As women in Bengal narrate horrifying molestation ordeals, Mamta Banerjee claims in the state assembly that the victims and their supporters were being influenced by the BJP. Amidst this, angry locals vandalize a TMC office in Sandesh Khali. Big political quake before the 2024 polls. Farooq Abdullah hints at joining the NDA in the future, says can't rule out that possibility. Announces national conference will go solo in the 2024 polls. Omar Abdullah says no doors open to NDA. Big setback for Sharad Pawar. Maharashtra speaker rules out, rules Ajit Pawar faction as the real NCP. Sharad Pawar says he will move the Supreme Court. Double mounts for Trinamool Congress leader Maua Moita, the former Lok Sabha MP summoned by the Enforcement Directorate in an alleged FEMA violation case on February 19. Days after eight Navy veterans are freed, Modi meets the Emir of Qatar, holds a bilateral meet. The Prime Minister accorded a ceremonial welcome. And India's team off to Recovers from early blows with Rohit Sharma and Jadeja scoring centuries while debutant Sarfraz dazzles with a brilliant half-century on debut. Doesn't uh, miss out on this occasion. It was short, it was wide and he gets a boundary. We're just beginning to feel at home in Test Match Cricket. But our top story tonight. In a verdict that is being seen as having enhanced the voters' right to know just how political parties are funded, the Supreme Court, in a landmark verdict, has struck down the contentious electoral bond scheme under which corporates could donate to, the, to political parties but the names could not be revealed. The big takeaways. The electoral bond scheme has been declared unconstitutional. The State Bank of India has been asked to stop issuing these bonds with immediate effect. State Bank of India will now have to give details and donors and donations to the Election Commission of all donations since 2019 by March 6th. The Election Commission then has to put the details of these donors and donations on their website by the 13th of March. Political parties have to return the bonds that have not been encashed as yet. Will this verdict then change the way politics is fought in the country or will cash continue to flourish? Is this really a solution to the problem? Take a look at our top story. A seven-year-old election funding system scrapped. The Supreme Court has ruled electoral bonds to be unconstitutional. The electoral bond scheme and the impugned provisions to the extent that they infringe upon the right to information of the voter by anonymizing contributions through electoral bonds are violative of Article 191A. We have applied the proportionality standard to determine if the infringement of the right to information is justified. Introduced in 2017 and first sold in 2018, the secretive electoral bonds were touted as revolutionary for political donations. Critics argued that the anonymity provided by the scheme led to corruption and an unfair advantage among political parties. At a primary level, political contributions give a seat at the table to the contributor. That is, it enhances access to legislators. This access also translates into influence over policy making. The top court said that the scheme is unconstitutional and violative of Article 191A of the Indian Constitution. It further held that the amendments to the Companies Act, Representation of Peoples Act and RBI Act, which allowed uncapped corporate political funding, is also unconstitutional. 
Headed by the CGI, the five-judge bench directed the State Bank of India to seize issuing electoral bonds reveal buyer identities and provide information on bond redemption by political parties. The Supreme Court's decision came in response to petitions challenging the amendments made by the Finance Act 2017 that established the electoral bond scheme. The Supreme Court has struck down the electoral bond scheme, comprehensively struck it down and all the provisions that were made to bring it into effect in the Income Tax Act, in the Companies Act, etc. Everything has been struck down. They have also struck down the amendment made which allowed unlimited con political contribution uh, being made by companies to political parties. This ruling arrives nearly two months ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Ahead of the 2024 Lok Sabha polls, the Supreme Court by this verdict has put all the political parties on the same level playing field and this is only going to rake up more issues as we get closer to the elections this year. In New Delhi with Kanu Sarda and Shrishti Oja, this is Nalini Sharma for India Today. And while the opposition has hailed the verdict and said it will expose the BJP's scams and crony capitalism, the BJP insists that all the electoral bonds were doing was ensuring that funding met methodologies were improved. Take a look. चुनाव में सुधार के लिए ये हमारी मोदी जी की सरकार का एक प्रयास नहीं था। आपको याद होगा वोटर लिस्ट पर आपकी फोटो छपती है। बड़ी संख्या में जो EVMs लाए गए उससे बूथ कैप्चरिंग बंद हुई है ना ये भी उसी प्रामाणिक प्रयास में चुनाव को पारदर्शी बनाने का प्रयास था अब माननीय सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने एक फैसला किया है तो हम उनका सम्मान करते हैं चुनाव आयोग हो वित्त मंत्रालय हो लॉ कमीशन हो लॉ मिनिस्ट्री हो इन सब ने अपने अपने स्तर पे जिनके जमीर जिंदा हैं उन अधिकारियों ने फाइल नोटिस में अपना विरोध दर्ज किया था उस विरोध को नजरअंदाज करते हुए किस तरह से ये थोपी गई इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड स्कीम इस देश पर ये हम सब ने देखा आज प्रधानमंत्री एक्सपोज हो गए हैं बेनकाब हो गए हैं उनका भ्रष्टाचार बेनकाब हो गया एंड आर फर्स्ट गेस्ट टुनाइट इज समवन हु अपीयर्ड इन दिस मेजर केस सीनियर एडवोकेट फॉर्मर लॉ मिनिस्टर एंड स्टिल अ मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट कपिल सिब्बल इज जॉइनिंग मी अप्रिशिएट यू जॉइनिंग अस मिस्टर सिब्बल मोस्ट लीगल ऑब्जर्वर्स आर कॉलिंग इट अ हिस्टोरिक जजमेंट एनहांसिंग द वोटर्स राइट टू नो बट द फियर इज दैट कैश एंड कैरी पॉलिटिक्स कुड बी बैक इन द एब्सेंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रल रिफॉर्म्स दैट द रेसिपी इन अ वे could be even worse now that electoral bonds have been declared unconstitutional well two responses to that number one uh, is it your assumption that there is no cash and carry politics nowadays when you when you when you when you bring people from other parties and uh, induct them in your party do you think they they are paid any by by check for doing that no but that's exactly uh, it the so cash, cash will be carry, enough carry sir, sir, sir that's exactly it on. sir it will get hold worse it will get hold, worse hold, in hold, the absence of electoral hold bonds let, let me answer let me answer. if you if you if you if you, if yeah, you just ahead. let me answer yes you know be a little patient yes right so i said number one cash and carry politics is happening at a rampant scale rampant scale even today so this has nothing to do with cash and carry and it's not something that i say it's what the supreme court has said in its judgment that this has nothing to do with the elimination of cash right and why have they said so because this money is given by check and with this check money it has nothing to do with elections remember this when a member of parliament fights an election the maximum he can spend is 95 lakhs when a mla fights an election the maximum he can spend is 45 lakhs now he explains that in the course of his election to the officers of the election commission now this money that they got and it's over 6566 crores since 2018 is white money they can't spend it in cash so this is white money which they used for their party what does that mean they use this for building their offices they use this for building the RSS offices. They use this for having this connectivity network all over India. This is to enrich the party. This has nothing to do with elections. In fact, electoral bonds is a misnomer. 
because this has nothing to do with elections. It's something to do with the bonding of the corporate sector with the government, with, with, with the BJP. That's all that it is. So where do you, on what assumption do you say that this eliminates cash? In fact, what it does is it enriches the party to do what it likes. And it's a non-level playing field, and therefore free and fair elections is not possible in this country with no, this kind of money. No, I, I spoke to a, a BJP functionary who said that, look, the BJP may have got a disproportionate share of electoral uh, bonds, but that's because the BJP is the country's largest party, is the ruling party. Uh, corporates will give monies to parties that are most likely to win elections, was the argument being made. So, you know, when you throw at Fine, me numbers... Let them, give. Of, when you, let them give. So what's the benefit, you believe, of today's judgment? We have... Ah, uh, so wh when, when big corporates give money to the political party in power, they ultimately do it, and the, uh, the court also says that possibility, there's a possibility of a quid pro quo. So when we know which corporates has given money to the BJP, we'll find out what the quid pro quo is. This is pure corruption, nothing short of that. And the Prime Minister keeps on saying, where are the scams of the BJP? Where are the scams of the BJP? Here is a scam that stares you in the face. And you say that no scams have been discovered. The rest, of course, are under the carpet yet to be discovered. Fact of the matter is, this has nothing to do with elections. This has nothing to do with cash. It has something to ensure that the BJP has so much money. Remember, in 2017-18, BJP got a contribution of 210 crores. When this scheme was implemented in 2018-19, they got immediately a contribution of 1,450 crores. And in 2019-20, when the Lok Sabha took place, it was 2,555 crores. How Sabha, could any political party match the kind of money that they made through these electoral bonds? No, the, the, the political, the corporates gave money through electoral bonds because they were hopeful that these, uh, as a result, their identity would not be disclosed. One of the reasons that corporates have feared giving money, especially to the opposition, is that the moment their <coughs> identity is disclosed, they could be targeted. Now the fear some have is the opposition will have even fewer sources of funding. Because the moment you made it now, let's assume that you have a new Why system where the amounts are disclosed. One second, no one second. corporate will give it to the opposition. If one second, when a member, incidentally, corporates have given to state governments where the opposition is in power under this very scheme. Yes. Now the point that I'm making to you is the following: corporates are afraid are afraid that when they give the money, their names will be disclosed, their entities will be disclosed. Why should they be afraid? If they want to openly support a party, they should openly support that party and say, we want to give money to this party. But the fact of the matter is, a corporate sector will give money to the Congress, it will give money to another political party, and they'll give disproportionate money to the BJP. Right, because the BJP is the center and they need favors from the political party on a daily basis. So this is the bonding of the corporate sector with the political party in power. It's nothing to do with electoral bonds. Yes, sir, but the point, Mr. Sibbal, is that when let's assume you are in the UPA government, the assumption is the UPA also got a disproportionate share of money because you are in power. Corporates will give money through a check or through electoral bonds to the party in power. We didn't have a my, scheme like my, that. No, but my point... We didn't. I'm sorry. Sir, if we you didn't had have a scheme. Sir, my limited point uh, to you is this. Scheme. The real question is, the real elephant in the room is electoral reforms. In the absence of electoral reforms, yes, electoral bonds needed to be transparent. No doubt about that. I'm asking you, what's the solution? Do you really believe this will make our politics in some I said, way, I, if, uh, a, a little bit more uh, a cleaner? Rajdeep, Rajdeep, put me in government and I'll give you the solution. Let me give you one solution. Let the corporate sector fund elections, right? Mm -hmm. And the money that is collected by the Election Commission of India should be distributed all through the state bank, should be distributed in equal proportion to the parties in power in parliament. So everybody is funded. And nobody can be targeted. No, you are going back. You are going back to some now, kind of a state funding. A no, no, you are going back to some kind of state funding when you say no, that. No, not Truth. state funding. Corporate funding. Okay, Again, corporate if you funding don't understand what I am saying, sir, sir, one second. If you don't understand what I am saying, corporate funding on the base of proportion. Uh, it's not state funding. If the BJP gets three hundred and fifty seats and the opposition gets words, hundred, does the BJP get three times more money or not? Yes. Yes. That's right, that, and rightly so. 
because they've got more seats and then nobody can be targeted. I'm giving you a solution. You want a solution? I'm giving you a solution. Mm -hmm. But the problem is you don't want that solution. You want to enrich yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. And remember, I mean, may I just say this to you because you, you are, you are a, a, an entity, uh, you're a, a channel which is funded ultimately by, by entities and, and you know, you know industry is, is, is in control of these channels. So what happens is the corporate sector funds the BJP, the BJP returns that funds in some way through form of, the, of advertisements to the very channel which has funded the BJP. So you remember this, this is very, this is a very serious issue and let's not make a mockery and uh, where, make an where, argument that no, 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 this will the increase uh, use of may, cash may, as if there is no cash happening. What, what, incidentally, I want to ask you, this has nothing to do with cash. This is white funding and what, what they, and let them show that they used it in the election. They'll never be able to show it. Mr. Sibba. It has nothing to do with the election. Please first, you, you clarify to me that assumption. Okay. Mr. Sibal, you've said that there is a scam here. There will be corporates who will say, look, when the electoral bond scheme was devised by your friend, the late Arun Jaitley, it was devised to try and bring transparency or encourage corporates to give <laughs> money. No, no, just a minute. To yeah. give money by check. It was designed to give, encourage corporates to give money by check. As it turned out, the system was opaque and led perhaps to many, many to believe, many of us to believe that it was heavily biased in favor of the government. Now the scheme is being scrapped. In your view, in your view, Mr. Sibyl, I wanted to know specifically what according to you is the scam involved? Oh, the scam is complete and I'll tell you why. When amendments were carried out in the Companies Act, Prior to this, uh, before the amendments took place, the law was that any company which is making a profit sh can contribute up to 7.5% of its average profit in the last three years to the political party. No problem. Now they, they changed all that and said that even a loss-making company can contribute as much as it likes to the political party in power mm -hmm. and the seven and a half cap limit percent cap was done away with so you could contribute any amount of money right what do you think this was done for the purposes of in ensuring that there is no cash or do you think it was done for the purposes of ensuring that corporate sector funds the bjp big time because they were in power i'm just giving you one example and so there was then an income tax uh, uh, amendment to the income tax act saying that you don't have to disclose it as part of your income, so you don't pay tax on it. And number two, they amended the Representation of People's Act saying that because it is over 20,000 20, 20, rupees, the, the, you don't have to tell the election commissioners to who funded it. If I give a check of 20,000 rupees, today I can, mm -hmm. uh, to a political party, and do, don't do it through the electoral bond process, that 20,000 rupees will be disclosed by the election commission. It will come on their website. I'll have to show who gave, who gave the money. But this was all done to have the corporate sector fund the BJP. Let's not make no bones about it. That was the intent of the scheme. The scheme mm -hmm. was not to get rid of cash, as you are saying, but that's an assumption that you are making without, making without any basis. It was a scheme to fund the BJP, and they were successful in amassing 6,566 6, crores during this period of time since 2018. Okay, can I? Can and, 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 and yet you are asking me questions that the assumption was to clean up the system. Okay, I want to therefore ask you in conclusion, Mr. Sibal, what next? All the disclosures are to be made. Uh, uh, SBI has to give it to the election commission, which has to put it on their website. Do you believe this will expose the quid pro quos that you believe are at the heart of this scheme? Are you confident of that? Of course. It has to happen because nobody, I mean, that's, the, that's in fact a comment that the Supreme Court has made in its judgment. That nobody, no, you see, less than 20,000 rupees, there's no question of any quid pro quo. Mm -hmm. Above 20,000 rupees, non-electoral bonds, no question of quid pro quo. But when there are elected bonds where the contributions are 2 crores, 3 crores, 5 crores, 10 crores, 15 crores, obviously you can make a phone call and get access to the minister. You can okay. get an easy meeting. You can get, uh, so, you know, put so your... So you're telling me... You you're know, telling it's obvious. I mean, I, you know, we, we, are not, we, are, we are not babes in the wood. We are not babes in the wood that we don't know what this is all about. Okay, so you're confident that as a result of these disclosures, the various quid pro quos over the last five years will come out 
and therefore you believe that's the real value in a way of this judgment. Am I correct? No, but they may well come out, but the ED will not do nothing about it because it happens to be quid pro quo of the party in power. And I'm afraid they will go against those, those opposition governments where they may, they may allege an quid pro quo and get the ED after them. So therefore, what's going to happen is as long as the ED uh, is not controlled, as long as this PMLA and the disaster which, 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 which has resulted in the powers of the, uh, under right. the PMLA of the ED, unless that is dealt with, I think that we will have another, uh, you know, we'll, this, this judgment will be used, in fact, for just the, uh, for, for targeting again the opposition people. Let's leave it there. Let's wait and see how that plays out. But for now, you have reason to be satisfied that uh, your battle in a way to try and make the electoral bond system uh, more transparent and indeed as the court has now ruled unconstitutional you won that big battle thank you very much Kapil Sibyl for joining us let's raise the big questions then and widen this debate the Supreme Court verdict is it a big blow to the Modi government that has stood by these bonds will the government take an ordinance route how to check black money in politics what will flush out cash really from our political system how to make the poll funding system more transparent? These are some of the questions. Joining me in the studio is one of the men of the moment, Professor Talochan Shastri, Chairman, Association for Democratic Reforms, that has been pushing for transparency in election. Subhash Chandra Garg, former Finance Secretary, worked closely with Arun Jaitley when this scheme was being, uh, uh, was being conceptualized. Bishwajit Bhattacharya, former Additional Solicitor General, joins us. We'll get the legal view from him. Rohan Gupta is Congress spokesperson joining us. Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, former Chief Election Commissioner, and Rajat Sethi, political commentator, close to the right. The BJP is not willing today to come on this story. I just also want to tell our requests, our guests, to keep their intervention short because we have limited time. But I want to raise, before we come to the guests, just give our viewers just how the donations have taken place via electoral bonds between 2017-18 and 2022-23. Look at the numbers in crores. The BJP got 6,566.13. This is as per Supreme Court. Congress got 1,123. The TMC, interestingly, got 1,092.98. The BJD, 774. DMK, 616. TRS, 383. YSRCP, 382. So, some of the regional parties got a lot of funding, but the BJP well ahead of the rest. ARP, 94.29. 101.38 was the Shiv Sena. Uh, NCP 63.75, JDS 48.78, JDU 24.4, others 31.1. This is the source, is the Supreme Court verdict. Let's get straight first cracking into the debate at this moment. Because Telochan Shastri, I'll start with you. You believe this is a day to smile, a historic day, the voters' right to know has been announced. Is that the reason why you're celebrating? Because many believe it, it's not going to change the system of cash funding our elections. It's a day to celebrate. It stems the rot. It doesn't solve all the problems. And the problem of black money was there before the electoral bonds. It was there during the electoral bonds. And it is still there today. So what should we be celebrating today according to you? See, this transparency which had been blocked and you know we don't know what happens behind closed doors and things could have gone from bad to worse. The Supreme Court has put a check on that. So now we are back to a more transparent system. You're back to a more transparent system. But just uh, 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 let me bring in Dr. Qureshi on that. Dr. Qureshi, do you believe, do you share the optimism that we are back to a more transparent system? There are those who fear that, uh, that corporates now uh, will simply not uh, give money by check as they did under electoral bonds because they didn't want their names disclosed. Now... With their names being disclosed, they'll be reluctant to give money by check, especially to the opposition. Well, I'll agree with the Professor Shasi, but with a modification that even earlier, uh, before the bond, there was no transparency. And uh, ADR in, uh, itself was uh, protesting about it because 70% of all donations were uh, reported to be in cash, which was not transparent, which is what uh, the, the bond they scheme tried to, uh, to tackle. However, it is very important for us to recall the speech of the finance minister when he introduced it uh, the, through the budget speech. His very first sentence is very important to remember. 
he said without free uh, without transparency of political funding free and fair elections are not possible very good that's what we have been saying second sentence also equally good that for 70 years we have failed to achieve that uh, transparency now we expected the third sentence to uh, bring in transparency it did the, just the opposite it said uh, now we will have electoral bond and the impact of it was that whatever transparency which then existed would be done away with and what was the transparency then that any donation of uh, more than 20000 rupees just 20000 rupees was to be reported to the election commission election commission would certify uh, that report and on that basis they will get income tax exemption now 20 crores 2000 crores anything is a secret now is that the transparency with they uh, tried to bring in so you're so, saying no. you're saying this electoral bond scheme would have worked provided it had been made transparent if it, what was given to state bank of india the donors names would have been revealed it would have been the ideal way to actually work the system subhash chandra garg as someone who was working with arun jaitley on this scheme was the, that the flaw in the system that you you the, told corporates you can give this uh, these bonds through uh, state bank of india your names won't be disclosed but the government could have access to the names no one else would See, the, uh, this was the feature, uh, uh, main feature of the scheme. Uh, and you need to contrast it with what the system was um, prevalent earlier, which was a complete opaque system. The corporates were giving donations to the political parties, but they were giving it by sort of converting it into cash and then breaking it to all numerous kind of numerous donations of less than 20,000 rupees each. So that was an opaque system which uh, the government of the day tried to make it more transparent. It's not a fully transparent system, but more transparent system that you are making donations from your uh, KYC compliant bank account, the political party is receiving it into their bank account and then spending it by way of check. So it's a... Uh, no, but what, what stopped you, if I may ask Mr. Garg, from telling the corporates that look, uh, or telling State Bank of India that every year you will have to disclose the names of the individuals who've given the money through electoral bonds? That would have sorted out the problem. So that is the, that is the s simple clinching factor. If you do this, then this scheme is nothing different than the earlier company um, uh, act scheme which was prevalent there where you made the donations by disclosing to whom you are giving uh, and that was not working no it was not it, working therefore because mr gar sorry to press you on this because corporates did not want their names disclosed the truth of the matter is that's the really nub of it corporates so, don't want to disclose to political parties uh, don't want to donate if their names are disclosed am i correct that's the difference correct. between that, india and america so that is the precise problem which was trying, which was being tried to be solved. If you have this as a problem that the corporates are not willing to sort of disclose their names and that is why the scheme is inoperative. Uh, if you have the same feature in the electoral bond, right. the electoral bond scheme would also be uh, non-starter. Okay, let me come to specifics. Vishwajit Bhattacharya, I want short, sharp, two legal answers from you. One, number one, can the government go and pass an ordinance striking down what the Supreme Court has done? Is that a possibility before the Lok Sabha elections? Do you see that happening? Yes or no? The government will try its best. Government will try its best to get over this inconvenient judgment, but government will fail. No, so can an ordinance, can, is the ordinance route possible? Ordinance route, you see, because Article 123 of the Constitution of India, all that the government has to do is the Union Cabinet will have to sit and send its recommendation to the President and the Honorable the President will sign. Now, then, then, the, then the matter goes to court. And, you know, after this kind of an emphatic verdict by a five-judge bench, historic verdict, brilliant verdict, I, I think the court, uh, the government will fail in court again. Okay, no, number two legal point. There are corporates who donated under this electoral bond scheme on the basis that their names would not be disclosed. Now the government, now the Supreme Court is saying names will have to be put up on a website of the ECI. Can therefore the government or indeed some of these corporates go and say, look, this is a, a violation of the commit, uh, commitment or the promise of the original scheme. You can't suddenly now disclose our names. Can they say that? 
there is no right higher than the majesty of the supreme court five judge benches order it is a it is a constitutional command articulated by the highest constitutional court of the country this argument is as sort of frivolous as a small a petty contractual right can, can they take a review right can they seek a review on this basis can they seek a review of this order of on this basis of course they will review and it will be emphatically it will be thrown out it should be thrown out with exemplary costs but they can go for a review they can go for a review they will go for a review and they will face another defeat okay let's come therefore to the i have kept those who have more political views to the end ruan gupta you first you know the congress is celebrating the truth of the matter is that it appears to me that the celebration may well be premature because let's assume that the names come out you will then have to show that there is a quid pro quo in those specific names what if you are not able to prove that what it might actually result is that in future the opposition parties will get even lesser money through through the check route now that names uh, may have to be disclosed nobody wants to give money to a to a party they think is losing <laughs> say absolutely not rajdeep it's not about uh, you know celebration from day one from the time this scheme was announced congress was against that because it is against constitution it is against the right of voter to know who is funding which political party and the way this design scheme was designed i think is a big tight slap on the arrogance of bjp this is a big tight slap on their so called fight against corruption modi ji was speaking against corruption yesterday a day before in abu dhabi and see this is the biggest example of corruption by no, what is the corruption what, what is the no, no. i i need to, i ask this to mr i ask this to mr sibbal i'm asking you what is the corruption the corruption un, under the scheme corporates could give money through through bonds without their names being revealed correct what is the corruption that's i tell you what is the corruption here see when according to this scheme the recipients can be known only by sbi and it is not available in public domain the way this government has functioned it stops the right of the people suppose the congress party is opposition party we know what happens to people who even who support congress party do you feel that if this scheme is like this people will support congress party or even if they want to donate no because sbi the information is available to sbi and the way this government is functioning we never know whether they can access the information from sbi on other side bjp which has collected more than 65% through electoral bond there is no disclosure so people can completely can I, openly donate without just getting into radar of the people okay. at least people will know that okay these are the people who have been given donation to bjp and these are the political benefits they have gone in terms of contracts in terms of the other deals whatever they get obviously there is a correlation between that okay let, there is let, me, let, let me bring in rajat sethi on that rajat sethi prima facie it appears that the electoral bond scheme could have involved could have involved uh, quid pro quos which were not being made available to the public and that's why number of people are celebrating that you need transparency in the system the voter has the right to know who is contributing to whom to that extent it is the bjp government scheme has been ruled unconstitutional it is therefore a slap on the face of the government <laughs> let me let me burst the celebratory balloon uh, you don't nobody in fact uh any any aspect any stakeholder in the ecosystem stands to gain out of it uh any kind of a retrospective step is in itself a travesty of justice in my humble opinion if you uh, if the law of the land today says that you know my name should be anonymous tomorrow if one entity goes up a constitutional entity says that no retrospectively i'll go and change that is travesty that is against natural justice and i humbly disagree with the honorable supreme court on this next uh look at uh, i mean all of you have already discussed this point through the electoral bonds a little bit of tinkering that could have been possibly be done was to remove that information from the sbi put it either with the rbi or with a constitutionally independent body like the election commission or the supreme court itself and what what supreme court in, uh, uh, actually did was they threw the baby along with the bath water they could have ideally gone in and tinkered with the structure so that the information asymmetry that was there with the sbi holding on to that information mm -hmm. could have gone to somebody who could have been a trustworthy organization of not sharing that information with anybody now here in this process we have been thrown back 5 uh, 7 years ago when uh, uh, the state of affairs was such that there was no transparency whatsoever so we are stuck in that mode where the, the election 
where you will continue to uh, receive, parties will continue to receive cash. Uh, no political, uh, no uh, corporate entity would come out in the public domain and would want their name to be acknowledged with any party. Today, you associate with the conservative parties, they might be pushed back even nationally, internationally. There might be a lot of liberal uh, governments around the world which might go against the corporate donors, uh, conservative donors in India. So it, it will have international repercussions as well. So I don't see, I don't see so any... You don't you, you actually made a point that you believe the baby has been thrown out with the bathwater. Quick response, uh, 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 Rohan Gupta, and I'll go around the uh, table again. Quick response from you to that. Oh. That actually, cash will be back. That's my point. The worry is good that uh, uh, bonds have to be made transparent, but we could go back to the worst of the cash system. I don't agree with that. I think when transparency is there, anybody wants to bring cash, obviously they are against the public domain. It's, it's not that easy. But here today, if it is quid pro quo, people don't know. People don't know who have funded BJP. What are the benefits they have taken? But I can BJP get a quid pro quo, pro quo through cash also. I put my money That's in a... cash and I will get a quid pro quo. You are telling me there were no quid pro quos before 2017? I'm when the Congress that. was in I'm, power? I'm... I am not saying that. I am saying that even if there is pre 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 it is known to the people. Today we don't have yeah. under electoral bond scheme. You don't have no. You don't have any mechanism to know who has done what and who has benefited out of it. So that's the difference here. That okay. is there is a transparency. We Can know I, that in order to correct the system. No, no, one, one, one minute. Uh, okay, well, one minute. Uh, Talojan Shastri, that's the fear. As someone who has done, you know, extensively campaigned for transparency, good that transparency comes into the system. But the court has said the bond system itself is unconstitutional. As a result, we are now in a vacuum ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Who knows, the BJP already has got its funding organized. Maybe some of the regional parties in power already have their funding organized. How is this going to change anything substantially? It's not. You see, there is a big myth floating around saying that somehow electoral bonds had removed the cash donations. Our own data shows that only one part of the donations received from by political parties was through the electoral bond. How much percentage roughly would be? Sir, it is like the tip of the iceberg because cash... 10%, 20%? Anybody's be guess. Bonds? 6,000 crores BJP receives through bonds in the last seven years. Let me finish. They must be spending 50, 60,000 crores. Le no, no, I'm not talking about any po political party. Yes. What I'm saying is that the cash in circulation, according to the RBI, has doubled since demonetization. So black money has not disappeared. And the black money is not only operating in real estate. It is operating in the political system as well. Political parties before 2017 got black money. After 2000, when electoral bonds were there, they got black money and they will continue to get black money. The problem of black money is a red herring when we are discussing the issue of electoral bonds. It has nothing to do with electoral So bonds. what changes come tomorrow? Or what changes come March 13th when all these names are put up on the uh, ECI Nothing website? I think the public, uh, you know, in a democracy, the information is very vital and people will know who is funding who. That's so all. that's that's the public's right The other to thing, they're yes. saying that the corporates are afraid. I am not agreeing with that. You see, as somebody has said, it's a Supreme Court judgment. The government and the SBI at any time knew who was funding whom. It's the public which we did not know. Right. So making it public doesn't make any difference. You know, the, the government already always knew that. So what, you know, we're just raising... Okay, <laughs> then let me bring in at this moment uh, 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 Dr. Qureshi. Dr. Qureshi, what changes come tomorrow? I'm, I'm sorry to sort of uh, prick the balloon a bit. My worry as a cynic is that nothing will change if anything cash will grow. That's what my fear is. Cash. You know, the, uh, the Rajiv, I have been writing and I've been saying that even if uh, electoral bond scheme was an improvement on cash donations, all that we wanted that the, the uh, donor and recipient should be disclosed, which was a 30-second decision for the government, which they never bothered. If they had done it, we would not have come to this stage. Secondly, the real issue is being skirted. Uh, there, are, there are alternative solutions if they are sincere about it. Alternative solution is start a national election fund where every corporate will uh, pay by uh, check without any fear of reprisal. And from that fund, uh, the give to the political parties based on their uh, performance. This is a suggestion which has been on the table for 20 years. Nobody uh, talks about it because they are not... So sincere. not state funding. Let me get that clear from you, Dr. Qureshi. You're saying not state funding 
create the, a national election fund political yes. party uh, uh, corporates give it to the fund not to a specific political party then the election commission based on the performance of a party distributes it am i correct exactly that's but then exactly the bjp I'm, which gets 350 seats just a minute if the bjp gets 350 seats congress gets 50 are we saying bjp gets seven times more out of that yes, fund sir. then no absolutely because it is based on performance and uh, it has it is this kind of system is working in 70 percent of uh, the countries of the world so if it can work elsewhere why can't it uh, be tried here Subhash Garg, if it works elsewhere, here we have a concrete solution being offered. National Election Fund, all corporates are free, individuals are free to donate them, their names will be disclosed, but they are not giving it to a specific political party. That's done by the ECI based on the performance of a party. Is that workable according to you, uh, Mr. Garg? So if it is voluntary, no donations will come. If it is made compulsory like corporate social funding, uh, that you make 1% of your profits uh, into this fund, this will come. Uh, but that is uh, like uh, a tax, as the social corporate responsibility is. And secondly, uh, if you distribute that in the ratio of what the uh, seats there are, the uh, electoral bond share is not worse than that share. Uh, if you, if the BJP has got um, about 57 to 60 percent of total funding, uh, that is precisely what it'll get, or maybe more, mm -hmm. uh, based on today's funding. So that solution looks better, but actually is not going to make any difference. You're saying corporates will not voluntarily fund into a national election fund. Why? Why will so they not voluntarily fund? Why should they fund? The corporate funding is precisely because there is uh, a quid pro quo. They want benefit. Why does all the money go to the party in power, whether it is the central government or the state governments? You have seen your... Uh, this. So but you're saying, the, you're, you're making a huge point. You're saying corporates in this country will not fund unless they're getting a quid pro quo. Am I correct? They're not doing yeah. it out of any generosity of their heart. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Qureshi, quick response from you. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, the corporates will uh, uh, donate because there will be income tax con uh, concession, income tax uh, in the name of income tax relief, all kinds of donations come. So they give a, a very decent uh, tax relief and they will all flock to it. You're saying they will flock to it. Rajat Sethi, you, uh, do you agree with that? That, that maybe you know, we need alternatives. Let's be honest, today's Supreme Court judgment should push the system to look for better alternatives. When the alternatives are being discussed, Rajdeep, let me also throw in the possible U.S. alternative, wherein you make all uh, lobbying legal. Let the party, let the corporates come out and say that I'm lobbying for so-and-so policy and I'm going to support whichever party is standing with me on this uh, on this lobbying effort. I mean, that too is is working in one of the uh, one of the oldest democracies. I mean, if, if others are setting an example, then so be it. Because right now, all lobbying is happening in, in, uh, without the citizens coming to know. And if Supreme Court is legitimizing the fact that the public should know under right to information, then so uh, is the public uh, uh, you know, uh, willing to know about what, uh, what kind of lobbying is happening, what kind of quid pro quo is happening in every single transaction. Can I, I mean, can I, can by an extension, then corporate lobbying should also come out as a legal sort of an alternative. Okay, so you're you're looking at a more U.S.-like model. Corporate lo lobbying should be uh, should be open, yeah, transparent. This is what uh, Supreme Court intended to say uh, indirectly. Indirectly, uh, Bishwajit Bhattacharya, your your view is there a solution? The I Supreme Court has left us hanging without a solution. No, no, no. Supreme Court has very clearly recorded what Mr. Garg stated. The Solicitor General could not deny that the corporates pay only for quid pro quo. It has been recorded. I have read the entire judgment, Rajiv. And Justice Khanna's judgment very clearly talks about proceed money laundering, money laundering under the Money Laundering Act. So therefore, what Supreme Court has done, Supreme Court has tremendous apprehensions about the nexus between corporates how, how, and... How are you going to prove it? You know, Mr. Bhattacharya, the Supreme Court is not going to... How are you going to prove a quid pro quo? Let's clear. The, uh, all the names are disclosed. Let's say all the names are disclosed on the 13th of March. How will you no, no, prove no, no. there's a quid pro quo? 
And the fact is, as Kapil Sibal said, it's not just the government, there are opposition parties who also got money. How will you prove a quid pro quo? I am not in not in politics. It may be any party. It doesn't doesn't matter. How will you but prove question, a quid pro quo? No, no. The question <laughs> it's a question of proof will come. You see, the when names come, when names come on 13th of March, mm -hmm. and I am optimistic the names will come. It is a question of survival of the rule of law. It is the question of implementing the judgment of the Supreme Court. By 6th March, State Bank of India has been directed to give all the names of the donors and donors to the I, commission. No, sir, but I take your point. But Rohan Gupta, what if the names are those who've donated both to the BJP and Congress? They may have donated more to the BJP, but they'll also donate to Congress. They'll also donate to state governments headed by the regional parties. How will you say quit pro quo? Congress is saying scam, scam, scam. You're going to have to prove the scam, no? Absolutely. See, Rajdeep, our point is very simple. The rules should be applicable to each and every party. That was That's why we were against electoral bond. There was no transparency. I agree. Supreme Court has not given the solution, but the solution is not in hand of Supreme Court. What they have commented that the scheme which is introduced by BJP government is not helping it. It is going from worst to worst. And that is why it is stopped. So I think it is upon, if, if we are in, in India, as all political parties together, we have to work together to find out transparent situation. But no, that's the problem. Today, none of you want genuine electoral reforms. You see, the problem is, none of you actually, all of you at various stages have benefited no, from an opaque not. system. So Rajdeep, we are definitely interested. And the, 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 the proposal of national fund was passed into 2023, Chhattisgarh the Congress conclave, it was already done. So we are there, we are open so for you're, the okay, you're so, open. But you're... then intention of BJP government needs to be there to come together and have equal terms for all. Okay, I, do you believe that the Chhattisgarh scheme? It that is that a clear national... kind of evidence that BJP wanted to do corruption in organized way without, you know, knowing the people, pe 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 letting people know okay. about yeah. the real consequences. Sir, we will know on March 13th, Doot ka Doot, Pani ka Pani in terms of names, but Absolutely. I want to know from you, Tarlochan Shastri, do you believe a national election fund is at all a solution? It is worth considering. You can also have public funding and you need to go back to a system of limits on funding which were there earlier because... You know, one company can buy the entire parliament. They have that kind of money. In India, forget about the US. So we need to have limits because undue influence of big money on politics is not democratic. Sir, but you come from a state like Karnataka where we know, for example, cash rules. I come from a state like Maharashtra where cash rules, real estate, mining, these are the areas from which political parties are getting their cash from which they're using uh, uh, the funding. So, you know, we can... Are we living in a, in a sort of idealized world where we believe that if we are able to create a national election fund, cash will stop, the, there will be a level, this word level playing field, how do you create a level playing field? You know, the system does not want cash to stop. That's the point. They don't want the cash to stop, neither the people, nor the corporates, nor the political parties. And let me Even state on record, yes. these electoral bonds, whatever the public statement of the government, there was no intention to remove black money from the economy. Mm -hmm. They knew very well that black money will continue. Whatever system you have, you'll have black. If you want to attack black money, that's a separate debate. There is, is some, um, um, you think the government doesn't know who's got black money? Mm -hmm. So you're saying do not confuse the larger debate of cash and black money in elections with the need for transparency in the way the electoral bonds... Absolutely. Bonds we are just mixing up things. You are absolutely right. We okay, so a that. final word from you, uh, Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, as a former chief election commissioner. Are you going to sleep well tonight with a smile of, on your face, believing that there is hope that the Supreme Court has given us? Or will we come back again as Mr. Gar seems to be smiling, that the reality is very different on the ground. We are living in an idealized world that suddenly overnight cash will go and now corporates will uh, be happy to have their names disclosed. No, of course, I am delighted and... Although my complaint against the court is that they took six years. It was the, the issue of extreme national importance because the uh, corruption in election is the mother of all corruption in the country. And uh, taking six years, but the, in any case, better late than never. The fact that the, it was a constitution bench of five, they examined it in their detail, they, they questioned everybody, and they uh, uh, reserved the judgment for three months, which means they studied the pros and cons. I think it is an excellent uh, judgment. 
and i'm sure so it, uh, whatever fears yes, yeah, have, okay but mr garg you you i'll give you 20 seconds as another someone who conceptualized this uh, this scheme go ahead it's a pyrrhic victory for the transparency that's right it's a pyrrhic victory for transparency but pyrrhic victory or not we need to at least celebrate the fact that the court has intervened to try and stop what was seen as an aberration as a distortion to the system and the public's right to know has been enhanced i i do hope that when that list comes out there will be a even more debates on the kind of uh, funding that's been done who's given funding to which party and yes what benefits did they get as a result we'll leave that for another day today our focus has been on a landmark verdict passed by the supreme court thank you all very much to my guests for joining us up next is uh, my colleague gorav savant he'll focus on that political battle in bengal i leave you with my image of the day and it's an image that i don't know as a cricket fan as an indian i celebrated today sarfraz khan made his debut for india in the last test in the third test against england he scored 62 but this moment when his father noshad khan got emotional as he saw this dream of his son playing for india the 26 year old went on to hug his father shared a heartwarming moment scored 62 before he was run out his family's dream has been fulfilled as he told his father if i didn't play cricket we would have been selling uh, trinkets on the train this, the that's the story uh, of the day is, uh, thanks for watching stay well stay safe oh, good night shubhratri jai hind namaskar doesn't uh, miss out on this occasion it was sure it was wide and he gets it